changed. <laughs> well. <laughs> King plank was is uh, when when we were putting the bowsprit on, we made it slot it ins, inserts into the king plank the uh, bowsprit, and John Fernio when I first found the boat out in Souk on Whippenspit Road in a barn that was inhabited by a few chickens I chased them out and I knew nothing about boats I had no tools I soon acquired a hammer a saw chisel went from there. John Fernio, an old shipwright, built some beautiful uh, west coast uh, trawlers. Uh, fisherman himself. Uh, he lived out in Souk and he happened by and gave me tips and taught me how to caulk. And well, one day I saw him down caulking. He's inserting that uh, bowsprit into the king plank with an old shipwright ads. And he's talking to me, I'm right below him, you know, and we're talking. He's not even looking, and he channels that out, you know, half inch deep, square side, with, a, with just, with, with the gnats like that. You know, you just don't see that anymore. So I did get some good help here and there, and learn what I needed to, to carry on. Well, welcome aboard uh, Four Winds. She was built in 1905 in Wallace Shipyards in False Creek. And uh, she was designed by Charles Maurer, who was uh, one of the top naval architects of his day, the late 1880s through the 1890s. He designed many of the great clipper ships that uh, were produced on the eastern seaboard. Uh, he was asked to after he retired uh, in the turn of the century, he was asked by Thomas Fleming Day to design a boat for single-handed sailing around the world, and he came up with the Four Winds design, that's the, the design name of the vessel, uh, and also her, her given name. Um, uh, he's the one that had who I, I guess saw the article in Rudder Magazine uh, on Four Winds and then bought the design outright because he never wanted anybody else to have one. He wanted the one and only Four Winds. So uh, he had it for several years, I'm not sure how long exactly, and uh, sold it to somebody, I guess another member of the club, and then it uh, went through a number of owners. I mean, it was a derelict in 1930. I mean, the fact that it's even still here, it was in Seam Harbor on the backwater to Seam Harbor there uh, on the mud flats with its mast sawn off and its keel stripped off and lead, that, which they used for the war effort when it got to the into the 40s. But in the th but for a number of years there. As you can see, it's pretty spartan. Doesn't have uh, a sink. Where it sort of going back in hundred and some years when you step inside here. Uh, there's normally a wood stove here. I had a, a fisherman number two from Sackville, New Brunswick, cast iron stove, beautiful stove. First one I had was enamel. It lasted maybe 25 years. And then I got another one when it went from just using it, but they eventually burn out. Put another one in and it lasted another 30 years. Uh, but I got to get another stove. At the moment, uh, used to be a head around the corner, but it was just awkward and just, just go the old fashioned way and use a bucket. Got a nice brass bucket though. Uh, Gonna, my next project do a little more refinishing down here and brighten her up a bit. And uh, a lot of this 
has been replaced. You, if you look at the hole there, I don't know if you want to shoot in there. I had this all stripped out one time. There was nothing in here. Uh, when I got it, West had been working on it and putting an interior in plywood and not very professionally done. So when I acquired the boat, I just took all that out. And uh, but I, before I put anything in, I took pine tar and linseed oil. Got it nice and hot, and just put numerous coats over everything in the hull, hull and <clears throat> inner hull and ribs from stem to stern. So that's, and then I put an open ceiling of yellow cedar so that the air is getting all the way everywhere in this boat, and that's what makes why she's still sound and no rot, even when she spends long periods of time on a mooring by itself. So oh, just airflow is the key. So I always keep these open. Lots of airflow. I've got a big porthole in the in, in, in the aft and a few funnels and uh, she, you, no mildew damage, no staining at all, which is phenomenal. I guess for a boat, that's, you know, people think you got to put heat to it. It's air what you need. Uh, so we also then put all the whole new interior in in 1973 prior to going on uh, an expedition to communicate with Orca. This is a berth. There's another, I don't know what happened. It's the only thing that's gone missing since, because I don't lock the boat. Uh, people respect it, but somehow the I have another little panel that used to fit in here. So you could just take, and it went over slid over here so you had a full queen size bed and with room to stand on either end and uh and now it's it's a tight twin bed but uh but usually it's uh <laughs> it's just me uh, yeah and then there's cabinets underneath that are accessible through the the hat the doors or through hatches uh, and are those quarter berths in the forecastle no, well, this more of a storage shelf. Uh, right now, it's stuffed with all the sails up there in the forecastle, and uh, if you on the other side is a another a bin, kind of a bin thing behind the stove for life jackets, whatever you want to store back in there. Uh, so, yeah, we kind of designed this. This I, I just designed this interior by this. My imagine I never put anything on paper. I just said, oh, okay, I want six feet here. We need a wood box there. The stove goes here. We need a counter about this high. So it was all done by feel, uh, rather than uh, penciled in so on, on a designed proper design. But it worked out okay. Yeah, I've got to put some knees in too. This one's over overdone almost. It's almost, uh, but uh, it's stout, <laughs> and I wanted it to carry this corner because I don't have any bulkhead here. So I put a big knee in there. The deck was sagging at one point, and I jacked it up and you know made did it proper. Put another knee here. If you look, this is a uh, a U wood knee which are hard to find because you wood branches don't normally go at 90 degrees too well they mostly go up and uh, this came from Malcolm Island which had the greatest stand of you wood in the world big trees big you wood trees and uh, the loggers had the sense to not touch them when they clear cut that area but then they sent it I forgot what the name of these guys are but the they're trimmers, you know, they, after they've replanted and then they want to get rid of any bigger trees. So any tree over 12 feet, they were told to, to get rid of it, cut it down. And they went and cut all these yew trees. Like, a, the, like I said then, the greatest stand in the, on the planet. And they were just laying there to rot. And this particular one came up, and they cut all the, the, the trees and left they finally got to the biggest one which was you know five feet across which is huge for a yew wood tree and 
the guy was reluctant, uh, and then he stuck his saw in it, and then it was no turning back. Cut it down, and just as the tree was falling, it started pumping out like blood. Uh, sap, red sap was just being pumped out and, and like a geyser coming off this tree and when I heard that it's just kind of heartbreaking but uh, I said take me up there and we went there and out of that tree I cut a piece out that that uh, granddaddy of them all tree uh, made a knee out of it. The hull is like the interior. I didn't get that article from Rudder Magazine that has uh, uh, drawings of the original interior layout until I'd, I'd done this uh, three years before. Uh, Bill Garden found the article. He's a West Coast designer here. People know, a lot of, most people know. Uh, so, but uh, she's got a a, a nice interior, all good wood, and a variety, like this piece here is yew wood uh, that uh, is local and on the countertop laminated against the oak. Got a yew wood knee over here, which uh, I think I told that story. <laughs> um, but it's all oak and teak, solid wood uh, with bronze fittings, so you know it is in character. And uh, I had this uh, layout here we, we, when I originally did it. It was in 1973 is when I built the interior, for getting the boat ready to go on an expedition to communicate with Orca whales up uh, in Johnson Straits. And specifically, we ended up in Robson Bight. We kind of discovered Robson Bight as a, a whale uh, habitat where they like to go and the, the rubbing rocks and all that. I certainly, I'm a sucker for an old vessel, you know, that needs help, that needs repair, needs to be kept alive. And uh, not only have I done that with the four winds, when you step on here, you're stepping back in time. I mean, even though, you know, we put something in this interior in 1973, for instance, uh, it's in keeping with the kind of thing you'd see a hundred years ago or more now. And, uh, I mean, I did, went many years without an engine, just to keep it original and uh, have an experience of sailing. You, you get a different thing going when you don't have an engine, uh, and you're 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 closer to the sea. You're closer to the winds. You you know you uh, yeah you do things differently and sometimes more adroitly. <laughs> Yeah, there's 14 foot white ash sweeps is what I use. You can, I can m maneuver better, at least, you know, coming into a dock or whatever in close quarters. I can maneuver better than you can with an engine with those things. And they're using to get out, you know, to where the wind is. Often the wind's lying out a couple kilometers out or something, and you can reach it within an hour uh, and be on your way for the day, you know, with some good, good breeze. So, uh, no, every, I mean, here, I mean, I, there was once a head, but what was the purpose of a through hull and just smashing up the head and it was just going out into the ocean anyway? I, I'm probably highly illegal, but I just still believe it. You know, with this boat, you use a bucket, you know, and uh, I use GPS. a lead line. I do have a radio these days. I realize weather reports are critical <laughs> at times, so. That's about the only modern piece, other than I, navigation. I just have a compass and and uh, and um, charts. You know, that's the beauty of this coast. There's some really good charts that covers it really well. Did a hydrographic service did a great job, <laughs> and I guess continue to do so. Although I don't like it in meters, I like fathoms.
coming up through the hut.